Good morning and welcome to day five and the final part of my epic adventure around the North Coast 500 here in Scotland. The past four days have been absolutely incredible. From awesome castles to epic waterfalls and beautiful scenery, this trip has been something that I'm never gonna forget. Honestly, it's been spectacular. Now last night, I parked up in this lay-by just here, had a lovely sleep in the car. Didn't set the tent up last night because it looked like it was gonna rain. Don't think it did in the end but yeah parks up here had a lovely sleep no one else about lovely and relaxing other than some deer that came down to the car last night i couldn't believe it like, there was some deer just walking by the car i thought i heard something so obviously i blocked all the windows out like i showed you the other day and i peeked through and some of the deer were about and this morning i've just seen them up the top here as well i don't think they're about now as soon as it came out the car but uh, how amazing is that i love it but uh, anyway this morning gonna make my way um down to the glen Doherty viewpoint just a few miles down the road we're gonna have a look at that because that view just sort of signifies road trip you look at it and think wow that is a road trip when you see that then gonna be making my way back that way and heading down to see some more waterfalls before continuing down the road and back into Inverness where of course I started this trip five days ago so yeah we're gonna head to this viewpoint first it looks stunning from the photos that I've seen uh, it's only a few miles down the road again it is slightly off the actual NC500 road like some of the things have been uh, but nowhere near as much as the Isle of Skye was when I went there yesterday that was awesome wasn't it uh, yeah, it's a few miles off route to come and see this viewpoint and then we'll be heading back that way where that motorhome is going and uh, yeah continuing round um, down to uh, Rogie Falls so yeah looking forward to that let's go So I've just parked up then here at the viewpoint and look at this, what a way to start the day, what a view. Look at that, the windy road in between the mountains, all the lush scenery, and then down at the bottom there, you can just make out the lock as well. Oh, it's a bit windy. <laughs> yeah, down here between the mountains, how spectacular is that? Shows how high up we are in the highlands, doesn't it? Look how low the cloud is just here, or how high up we are. <laughs> There you go, we yeah, are parked up literally just over there. It's probably space for about 15 vehicles or something on here. So yeah, there's quite a bit of room. And of course, there's the information board just here. Look at that. Little bits of information for you. God, what a way to start the day, just looking down there. Honestly, let's move a little bit further over this way. Show you even further down. Yeah, like I say, you've got uh, space for quite a few to park on here. A few people got their uh, little camper vans parked up. Here we go. Oh, it's stunning, isn't it? Absolutely spectacular. Really is. Love the mountains just coming out there from the side. And like I said, the road, the fact it just winds down through the middle. What a view. I was a bit worried this morning when I woke up and saw it was quite misty if we were going to see this view. But luckily, it's not too bad at all. Absolutely fantastic. Right, I'm going to take it in for a minute, as I always seem to do, get back in the car, and we're going to continue down towards our next location. Look at this. Wow. Well, the Glen Doherty viewpoint was wonderful, it really was. Now, this is the first train that I've seen along the trip the royal scotsman there we go it's coming past there love my trains love my aviation it's not just theme parks and traveling to different places oh gorgeous traveling nice and slow on this part of the route so we can see oh there's everybody having the breakfast hello morning <laughs> oh there we go that was nice to see wasn't it Perfect timing. Oh, look at that. I thought I'd pull in a little bit further down the road so we can get another angle of the train coming past. Love the carriages on there. In a wonderful setting as well. Wish I was having breakfast on there this morning. How nice would that be? Coming through the mountains just here. Going nice and slow as well, of course, so people can take it all in. Here we are, one final shot for you. 
Oh, it's lovely. The Royal Scotsman making its morning journey there. Love the sound there of the train just making its way along the tracks. And off he goes. Right, next stop, Rogi Falls. So I continuing down the road for about 20 minutes. I've made my way here to Rogi Falls. Quite a bit of park in here as well. This looks really nice. And we've also got a suspension bridge that goes over the waterfall here. That brings back some memories from the other day. But uh, here we go. Here's a little look at the walks that you can do down here at the Falls of Rogi. So yeah, we're just here on the car park. Um, now you can either go straight down to the waterfall there and go for it, or you can do the longer walk around. Then it says you get some different views and quite a scenic route. So, I'm going to do the longer walk around this way. It says allow half an hour for that. I do walk quite fast though, so it probably won't take me quite as long. But yeah, if you didn't want to do that, or if you're in a rush, or maybe this will be your first destination um, on your NC500 trip, if you were doing it clockwise, um, then yeah, you know, you might just want to nip down quickly. But yeah, I'm going to do the longer pathway round. And yeah, as you can see, this looks really, really pretty down here. Looking forward to it. Here we go. Yeah, the Salmon Trail. There we go. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Rogie Falls is one of the best places in Scotland to watch salmon. There you go. So they run upstream um, to find a mate and lay their eggs. So yeah, we're going to do the longer walk. Let's go for it. It's Rogie Falls. Very nice around here. Love the trees out here in the forest. Nice picnic bench up there. Nice and early on a morning, so not too busy. To be honest, uh, that's been the key to this trip, getting to some places early on a morning. Uh, but it's been nowhere near as busy on the roads, and even some of these locations have been nowhere near as busy, actually, as what I was expecting. So I've just took a left off the path and over onto the blue route just here. It's not really a proper path this way around here. So just be wary of that. I think it's a proper path that goes straight down to the falls. But if you want to do this longer uh, trail around, then yeah, it's not a proper pathway, you know. But uh, it's very nice down here. Very uh, picturesque. Love all the different variety of trees down here as well. It's lovely. Yeah, it's just got a lot of character to it, this place has, you know. Really, really pretty. I can hear the waterfalls over in the distance. But I thought it'd be nice just to do this longer walk around because why not? Like, we're here, live the moment, enjoy life, go for it. So of course, just so you don't get lost, they put these little markers in just here. As you can see, that one's got blue painted on it because I'm following the blue route. Spectacular view over to the forest there with all the mountains behind it. Really nice that is, isn't it? This is actually one of the most peaceful and tranquil places that I've been to on the whole trip, to be honest. You can just hear nothing other than the birds just tweeting away. Just listen. Nothing, like how nice is that? Just hear the faint distant sound of the waterfalls gushing down the rocks in the distance. Getting further and further down towards the water now. It's getting louder here in the distance. This is pretty stunning around here. So many lovely photo opportunities as well. Like all the rocks that you can just stand on, take some really nice photos. It's gorgeous. I can't believe there's no one else about. Like, it's just so quiet. Oh, wow. It's definitely worth doing the longer walk around there. I've only been walking for about 10 minutes to get to this location. And look at this. Oh, this is just really nice and peaceful here. And it's so picturesque as well with all the forest, all the rocks just in the water. And yeah, the falls themselves are around in that direction. Oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. Yeah, the pathway just carries on down this way to the left. Well, this is absolutely beautiful. And the sun has come out right on cue. Look at this. Lovely. And the fact there's nobody else here. So I can see the bridge down there in the distance and the main part of Rogi Falls just there. So yeah, of course we're standing behind the falls at the moment, but in just a few minutes time, we're gonna be over there on the bridge with all them crowds of people. Uh, nobody there at all. Oh, one person, there you go. That's weird, isn't it? As soon as I said that, one person appeared. Um, but yeah, we're gonna look back at the falls. Yeah, I just thought I'd come and uh, show you from this angle. Just come out on the rocks over here. Be careful if you're doing this. But yeah, just come out on the rocks just to get a 
bit of a better angle for you all really. Yeah, so I've now got to navigate getting back across here. Jumped over this one and head back around that way in the path, just up there. Well, it took 15 minutes to walk around the longer route just there. And I tell you what, it's more than worth it because look at this view that you get coming down this path. Incredible. We're nearly at the bridge now. It's literally just behind the trees there. But just the sound of the water cascading down the rocks in so many different places as well. It's got to be one of my favourite waterfalls I've seen on the trip, if not my favourite. So this is where the blue path connects up now with the main path just here. I've just come from the right hand side and of course that main path continued down that way. And here we are. One of the main viewing points just here. And oh wow, look at this. Honestly, the sound of it and just the location of this here is beautiful. I love the view of the bridge that you get from here as well. This is really impressive. In fact, this is much more impressive than what I was expecting actually. Photos and videos do not do this justice. It's wonderful, it really is. Bit of information about the salmon just here as well. Salmon's tail. There you go. Fishing isn't really my sort of thing, but I'm sure, you know, if you want to come and see some salmon, this is the place to come and see them. So yeah, we're going to make our way just down this way now onto the suspension bridge itself. This is my favourite waterfall of the trip, 100%. Just before we go down then onto the suspension bridge, just thought I'd show you the structure just here. It looks like the exact same design uh, with the support structure here and the cables as the suspension bridge that I saw just a couple of days ago. Um, yeah, pretty much the same design. Like, it's got to be built by the same people. And yeah, it rocks a little bit as you're going over there as well. But yeah, we're going to head down this way now. Lovely, isn't it? Love this place to bits. I think it's the fact that the forest that it's in as well, this feels so magical. It's really nice. Oh, there we go, got all the locks down there as well. People are starting that trend around here as well, <laughs> putting the locks down. Oh, there's loads on the bridge. Absolutely loads. Have we got a maximum amount on this one? Can't see a maximum amount. Oh, look at that. Rogie Falls, everybody, in all its glory. Yeah, the fact that you can see all the trees there and the forest behind it really makes this. And I love the fact they've put a suspension bridge in over it. I mean, the waterfall that I saw the other day is a close second place, but with this, it just all comes together in an incredible overall panorama that you can see there. You feel this bridge bouncing quite a bit more. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the only one on it now. Look at all these locks. So many locks all the way down. I mean, me and Charlotte put a, a lock on the famous romantic lock bridge over in Paris. Oh, it gets even better. Look at this angle. Oh, spectacular. And the view's even just as nice that way. Like, I'm so glad they put these bridges in. I really am. God. Right, I'm just gonna, once again, for the last time really, take in the view. This is my final destination now before getting back into Inverness. I'm only about 20 miles away now from Inverness and yeah, I'm quite emotional that this is coming to an end. I'm so glad that you've joined me throughout this adventure discovering the North Coast 500 for the first time. It really has been an incredible adventure. The absolutely stunning Rogie Falls. This place is incredible, it really is. It's just such a nice place to come as part of your NC500 trip, just to take it all in and just feel the ambience of this forest. It's got a certain magical feel to it around here that I really, really like. And just the sound of the water cascading down the rocks there is incredible, it really is. So instead of going back up the main pathway, I've continued along the blue route I thought I'd just come down here because I'm thinking we might get a view of the suspension bridge with the waterfall behind it. We get quite low down here. That's what I'm thinking anyway. I don't know if I'll be able to get far enough out. We've got the rocks out here. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is what I want. Honestly, it's like I'm a celebrity getting me out of here, isn't it? With the views of the, uh, of the suspension bridge. Yeah, this is where we want to be. Let's get out on these rocks. Oh, yes. 
That is the view that we want. Can we go down here a little bit further? Ooh. Lovely. Yeah, that is the angle that we wanted. Look at that, oh, I'm not the only person down here. I'm so glad that it cleared up and the sun has come out. I was, it was a bit concerned with the fog this morning. I was a bit worried, but yeah, like no need to be. I'm glad the weather's perfect, especially for Rogi Falls here. Absolutely incredible. There's just something about this forest that's got that magical feel about it. And I really just don't know what it is. I can't quite put my finger on it, but it just feels really special down here. I think it's all the rocks and all the big tall trees and of course, Rogi Falls, the waterfall. But just all of that together combines to be one of my favorite parts of the past five days. It really does. That is definitely the best waterfall that I've seen. I absolutely loved it, but just look at it. I think it is, it's all the big tall trees that really make it down here. Honestly, it's stunning. I'm gonna get back in the car and start driving down to Inverness. I can't believe it, we've come to this point, back to Inverness. Of course, if there's anything along the way uh, that I think might be worth stopping at, I definitely will do or show it you along the way. But in terms of on my itinerary, what I made and on my list, this was the last stop before getting back into Inverness. So yeah, let's get in the car and let's see. Well, five days ago, I set off on an amazing adventure around the North Coast 500. And I crossed over the Keswick Bridge just over there from Inverness and started off on this epic adventure. And there it is for the first time in five days, you can see that bridge again. Not crossing over it this time, because of course we're on the final part of the route. Inverness just off there to the right hand side, now less than eight miles away and I'll be back at Inverness Castle. And I'll tell you what, it is absolutely baking. It's 21 degrees Celsius, really nice temperatures. Finally, some heat, like, it's been really cold um, up here in the Highlands, but you know what, it's nice. I might even put my shorts on for the last part of the trip. Well, after what has been an absolutely incredible five days, I've seen waterfalls, castles, stunning scenery, and so much more. I've made it back to the bridge where it all started five days ago. Welcome back to Inverness. The sun is shining, there's a blue sky, and there's Inverness Castle again. I never thought I'd feel emotional seeing a bridge like that, but when you've been through so much and seen so many things and traveled so many miles on a trip, honestly, you just look at that where it all started and just think, wow. And the fact that the sun's come out for this final part of the trip is stunning, it really is. And Inverness is gorgeous. You can see the cathedral just over there. I've just parked on a car park just off to the side. I'm going to have a little stroll down this way now over into the centre, have a closer look at the castle because of course we only really saw it from a distance last time. So have a closer look at the castle and just take it all in. And of course, have a good trusty weather spoons. Yes, can't wait. I must say Inverness is a really picturesque city and it's got a lot going for it. Of course, the gorgeous cathedral. Along with that, there's lots of shops and restaurants, um, lots of accommodation here as well. And of course, Weatherspoons just here, the King's Highway. So I'm gonna get in there, get some charge and also have something to eat. 
Oh, well, that Weatherspoons was absolutely delicious. Oh, it's been four days since I've had one. So yeah, it was really nice to have a spoons in there. A proper nice sit down meal. Oh, it was lovely. And of course, made the most of the plug sockets in there as well. Charged up my laptop, cameras, a few other devices. Oh yeah, great to just have a chill out. And I sit down and uh, yeah, just kind of reflect on everything really that's happened. Honestly, what a spectacular trip this has been. It really has. And before we wrap up, just gonna continue having a little bit of a look around Inverness just here. I've walked up now to Inverness Castle. You saw it just in the background. There it is, that's why it's a bit windy up here. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be shorts weather. Uh, I'm glad I didn't put them on because uh, yeah, it looks like it might rain now. And obviously it's quite windy and it's soon clouded over. The weather can soon change here in Scotland, can't it? But uh, yeah, the castle looks like it's having a bit of a transformation around this whole area. So let's have a little bit of a read up here, shall we? Let's go and find out. Well, the view from up here on the hill is pretty stunning. And if we spin around to the right just here, we can see all the information boards. So yeah, you can still get nice and close to the castle. But from having a quick read here, it seems like there's gonna be a lot of uh, larger spaces uh, for the museum, the gallery, uh, along with that new places to eat and drink, stay and shop. Uh, and also a roof garden that increases the amount of green space around the castle. So yeah, that sounds really interesting. Here's a look at some of the concepts there um, that you can see. So yeah, they're gonna be completely transforming this area it seems around here. A little bit of a look into the future. VR on there as well. What's that going to be like? Some sort of VR experience maybe? I'm not too sure. But yeah, lots going on. And you can see like a little map just over here of the uh, developments as well. So yeah, it's quite a big place, isn't it? You can see there's going to be a new link building there in the middle to kind of connect the North Courtyard over with the rest of the castle there. Yeah, it's certainly something to come and do in the future. I mean, I knew that it was closed at the moment. Didn't realise why it was closed, but I thought maybe COVID. I didn't realise there was a transformation going on up here. So yeah, you can see all the boards kind of blocking it off. But if you are still coming here to Inverness, you can come up here and have a little look and, uh, and see the castle up close. That's a great photo, isn't it? There we go, with the uh, three new police cars in 1957. Standing out the front just there. Oh, and of course, there's the, uh, there's the statue. A bit more information, some more old photos. Here we go, 1899. Oh, wow. Huge crowds gather for the unveiling of Flora McDonald's statue in 1899. There we go, so that's the statue, of course, that we've just seen. And that's that next to. Yeah, quite a few old images. Really interesting stuff. Yeah, I look forward to coming back and seeing this when it's all done. Definitely. So just walking then down from the castle, just gonna have a look at this building here on the right hand side because it looks really interesting. The architecture on this looks lovely. So yeah, let's go have a closer look. We'll probably cross over the road and uh, have a look from the other side. Now that is a pretty spectacular building with all the turrets and details on there. Just the shape of it and also the color as well. Like the yellow bricks on there. Amazing, really nice to see. McDonald's there just next door. <laughs> Poundland here on the left. Yeah, you got loads of different shops and restaurants down here. Feels weird just seeing loads of people around again after spending like five days pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, I love that. It's probably one of my favorite buildings I've seen of the trip. I mean, it looks in a really good condition as well. But yeah, that's the Inverness Townhouse, I believe it is. Yeah, that is pretty spectacular. Look at the wolves here at the doors as well. Love these. They're pretty awesome, aren't they? Yeah, of course, wolves used to roam the highlands, as we can see there from the information board. But yeah, they're stunning, aren't they? Love those. Of course, you've got them on either side of the door. I've just noticed as well, if we look a bit further up, you've got the dogs just up on the, uh, on the top there as well. Back down here now then by the River Ness. And you've actually got another one of those bridges just down in that direction there. I bet this looks great round here at night. I mean, they've got lights all in the trees, like all the way down either side of the river. I don't know if these are normally lit up throughout the year or if they're just there for Christmas or other celebrations, but yeah, I can imagine all the trees lit up would look absolutely beautiful down here. Over the years, I've been lucky enough to travel to some pretty incredible places. And this trip to Scotland is gonna be right there as one of my best memories. And I feel some of the best content that I've ever filmed for YouTube across both of my channels. Honestly, I've absolutely loved this trip so much. I really have. I've seen so many things from amazing castles and, and beautiful vistas, waterfalls. I've seen it all this trip. It's been incredible. Some of the beaches, some of the places where I've spent 
the night and woke up looking at the views. Honestly, it has been incredible. Now, with this trip around the North Coast 500, I always thought it was gonna be good to do. I thought, oh, it's gonna be brilliant. I'm gonna make some great memories and see some wonderful places. But it's exceeded my expectations. And I kind of covered this a couple of days ago when I said a big part for me of this trip has been about not having a, a big schedule, so to speak. You know, I've not kind of had, oh, I've got to be here at two o'clock or I've got to check into this hotel tonight. It's not been like that, this trip. It's been very just going with the flow, um, getting in my car, if I felt tired, just stopping for a little bit. You know, I've not had to um, stick to time, stick to schedules. And that is what's really made this trip. Uh, my recommendation for you, whether you're doing this on your own or as a couple or a family uh, or friends, you know, whoever you're doing this trip with, um, if you're gonna do it, then really sort of don't plan too much ahead. Some Doing a trip like this can be really overwhelming sometimes. You might start to plan, you know, oh, every single detail out. Have a list of where you wanna go and what you wanna see but don't go too OTT with it. I think it's nice, you know, just going with the flow. And honestly, it's been wonderful. Some people wouldn't want to sleep in a car. Some people wouldn't want to go in a camper van or a motorhome that want hotels every night. And that's fine. You're still going to have a great time. But I feel for the most authentic NC500 experience, you rather want a motorhome, a caravan, or, or sleeping on the road as you go. And of course, if you want to recharge, um, you know, get yourself into some local campsites and caravan parks, because I've seen loads along the route. Uh, honestly, that's what's really made this for me, not having a strict schedule. Along with that, in terms of places to fill up, make sure you're always, you know, keeping a, a, an eye on your tank of fuel to make sure that you've got enough fuel and you're not going to run out um, anywhere quite remote. Um, of course, Inverness got plenty of places um, for filling up before you get on the road. And then as you make your way around some of the, the towns and villages that you've seen, you know, I've got fuel stations, I've got little shops like spa shops and that sort of thing um, to fill up. But, uh, oh, getting uh, <laughs> walk into the tree. I'm more focused on the camera than the tree. But um, yes, yeah, so that's the thing. Make sure you don't get caught out when it comes to the, uh, comes to the fuel. But uh, along with that, you know, just enjoy it, make some great memories. I've met some great people along the way too, which has been wonderful. Hopefully they found the channel, really hope so. If you have, a big hello to you. And uh, most importantly, just seeing more of Great Britain, the United Kingdom, Scotland, like in the North Coast 500 is gonna be one of my best ever memories. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this trip. I am so lucky to be able to do what I do, honestly. I appreciate all of your support so much, I really do, from the bottom of my heart, um, across both of my YouTube channels. If you don't know already, I've got Theme Park Worldwide, that's my other channel, where I cover theme parks, fun fairs, all them sort of attractions. Um, so of course, doing a big trip like this is very different for me, because normally I'd be in a theme park maybe every day or every couple of days, I'm not being a theme park for like six days. However, um, I'm actually doing a fun fair whilst I'm here in Inverness. Uh, I planned the end of the trip, of course, around a fun fair that is here. Quite a big fun fair with lots of different rides. And that is where I'm actually heading to now. So if you haven't already, this vlog's already online on Theme Park Worldwide. But head over there to my other channel. Check out the vlog from the fun fair in Inverness. Why not? Something a bit different. I'm looking forward to getting on these rides. After being out in the middle of nowhere for ages, it's going to be great to experience these. But uh, there we go. As we walk back up to the bridge just here, and taking the study views of Inverness. I really hope you've enjoyed this trip. Of course, the North Coast 500 um, and also visiting the Isle of Skye. You know, that was brilliant going over there uh, and seeing all of that. Honestly, some of the stuff I've seen on this trip, I'm, I'm, I'm always gonna remember and I'll definitely like to do it in the future again at some point, see some different things, go to some of the same places that I did again and see them again. Um, and along with that as well, I'd love to bring Charlotte here at some point in the future. She's never actually been to Scotland. Um, I'd like to plan something like that. But uh, there we go, thank you. Just thank you so much for joining me on this truly incredible adventure here on the North Coast 500 in Scotland here on Adventure Shore. And if you haven't already, go back and check out the four other videos from this trip. I also filmed lots from Scotland, including Loch Ness and various other places on a trip I did last year. So check that out if you've not already seen it. But uh, there we go, the sun's coming out for this final bit of the vlog. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for joining me on this epic adventure. That leaves me one final thing to say, and I really mean it. Get out there and have your own adventures. See you all soon.